welcome to Review the Light. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Imland SA04. Uh, but really quick, if you haven't yet, go ahead and click this link right up here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and this link right up here to uh, follow me on Facebook. So, uh, Imland is a relatively new name in the flashlight business um, and they have come out with some very interesting lights, one of which is the SA04. Um, so, we're going to look at it uh, in depth here in a minute and it's a uh, fairly complicated, got a lot going on. So, this review might be a bit longer than some of my others. So hang in there. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and get it started. Now the box is a little bit beat up. It uh, had to go through customs to get from China to here. So uh, if you uh, buy a retail model, I'm sure yours would be in better condition. But uh, mine, <laughs> the customs guys wanted to take a look at it. But uh, you can see on the box, there's a picture of the light here. Imolent kind of has this uh, blue and black uh, style going on. And uh, you can see some of the ANSI uh, uh, qual uh, specifications there. As you can see, it says it has two Cree XML2 emitters and uh, two RGB LEDs also. Um, and it says it gets up to 930 lumens, 280 meters. And uh, a little bit more information on the back. It says that this is part of the Shark series and uh, their website and some information there. So we'll go ahead and open it up. And, uh, yep, got everything out of there. So you can see on the inside here it comes, uh, the light is in this uh, little plastic container uh, with the uh, holster and other accessories underneath. So you can see here we have the holster, um, standard Velcro over, uh, a little bit of flexibility there on the sides of the uh, Imolent logo there. And on the back you uh, have the option to uh, Velcro it down or you can slip it through a belt right there if you don't want to rely on the Velcro. So you've got both options. Um, so that's the holster. Uh, the other accessories it comes with are a couple of spare O-rings and it looks like this is a spare cover for the screen. I'm not sure if maybe uh, your screen gets scratched up or something like that. You can put that new cover on. Um, but that's in there. And the warranty card and the instruction booklet and you want to make sure to hang on to the instruction booklet if you get one of these because it is a fairly complicated line it's got a like i said a pretty complex user interface and i'm going to keep this out <laughs> during the review to make sure that i don't miss anything all right and then finally we've got the sa04 itself the light in here so um, it's got quite a few features and we'll just start at the front and work our way back. So you can see here it has two main emitters and two side emitters here. These two larger ones are the Cree XML2 emitters. XML2 is the newer edition of the old XML emitters. It's a fairly uh, floody uh, kind of emitter and uh, it's currently the, the best efficiency uh, you can get in the for the flashlight form. And then these are the two red, green, and blue emitters. Each one of these can emit either red, green, or blue light. Um, so those are pretty neat. And you can tell here the reflector is designed to uh, give most of a parabola for uh, both emitters uh, with this uh, section in the middle. So the beam pattern isn't going to be perfect. Um, up close you can see, you'll see later that there is uh, two definable different beams, but uh, when it gets further away, the, bar, the beams join and became basically the same beam, so that's nice. And the RGB emitters, and for more up-close work, uh, they're not really designed for throw, so they don't have much of a uh, reflector for them. They're just kind of set in the size. And now you'll also see later that one of these emitters is uh, kind of a warm tint, and the other one's a, a cooler tint. So the SA04 um, is a very colorful light. It says it's got an adjustable tint, and it really does, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, so looking at more of the light here, you can see it's got a fairly large head to house pr pretty much probably everything going on in there, all the electronics necessary. Uh, you can see here's the screen. When we boot it up, you'll see what the screen looks like. It's got the model name here on the side. It's got two switches, the power switch and the mode switch. Um, and then it has the Imolent logo over here. The body has some light and early, and it's not extremely grippy, but uh, it's better than just a plain smooth uh, body. And then the tail uh, here is where you're going to unscrew it, and it's kind of got these flat portions uh, so that it's easy to take the tail on and off, which I'll go ahead and take the tail off and we can have a look inside. I accidentally hit the on button while I did that. Um, okay, so here you can see the tail. Uh, inside of here, there's this cap that kind of rotates freely. Uh, when you push it down, it rotates a little better. When it's not, there's, it's a kind of, kind of a, the cap itself is spring-loaded um, a little bit. But you can see that rotates so that 
these contact points match up with the battery when you put the battery on. Um, or I'm sorry, match up with the battery tube when you put it on. And you can see there's these two posts here. Those line up with these two small holes in the body. Um, so when you're putting it on, you just line that post up, line both those posts up, and then you can take it on and off. Um, it uses four AA batteries. There's those. And you can see if I can get some light down in there. There we go. There's uh, two springs and two uh, flat portions, just kind of the opposite of the tail. And I'll put that back in. And I don't see any markings indicating the battery direction, but it just follows. It, it tells you in the instruction manual, and it just follows the convention of having the spring portions make contact with the negative battery terminals, the flat uh, part of the battery. So we'll load it back up and we'll turn it on. So when the light is off, okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn it on. You just press the power button one time. That's this button here. You can see it's kind of got the power symbol on it. The other one has an M for the mode uh, button. But you press the power button one time and it turns on and it defaults to maximum output for both emitters. Now I apologize, it looks pretty cool here on my camera. Both of them do. Due to um, just my camera's white balance, I will... Uh, see if I can adjust that in post-processing, but maybe not. Uh, but anyway, um, you can see both emitters are at max power right now, and if my camera, I'm not going to adjust to that, but both of them are on. Now, when you first turn the light on, this, it will focus. There we go, that's pretty good. Um, this comes on here. This is the display to, sh to let you know what's going on with the light. So you can see in the middle of it, is a battery picture uh, that shows you the battery level. Right now my batteries are fully charged. Um, and this goes off after 30 seconds. So you can turn it off if you want, pressing the mode button here in the back, you can turn it off and on, or after 30 seconds it'll turn itself off. So uh, in the battery indicator there shows you your battery level and it'll also start to blink when you have about 15 minutes of battery power left. And also these bars indicate the brightness. So if I want to turn the brightness down, I'm just going to put my finger on here and swipe it down, kind of like with a touch screen. And you can see the those bars are going downward and the brightness is going down until we get to minimum brightness here now. These bars don't directly correspond with a certain level, so there's actually quite a few more levels than there are bars. I'm not, I haven't counted the bars to see how many there are total, but if uh, you may be able to tell here, I'm kind of moving my finger and the brightness is changing, but the bar level isn't. So there's more than one brightness level within each bar. So that's something to take note of, but yeah, so you can see here, as I swipe my finger up and down, the brightness goes up and down with it, or I can tap at a certain point. It takes a little practice getting used to it because my thumbs are a little bit bigger <laughs> than average, but I can tap at a certain point and it'll jump right to that point. Also, so you've got minimum brightness, which is very dim, you can see here. Um, and you can also tell in here the difference between the the warm and the cool emitter. Now both of these look pretty cool on my camera, but you can check out the beam shots uh, in the full review, by the way. If you click the link below, you can see the full review. Check out those beam shots, and uh, you can see the true tint of each emitter. Um, but the cool and the warm are both on right now, and right now I've got them both on minimum output. And if I crank them both up, they can be a maximum of it. So you can keep it wherever you like in between. And uh, also you can check out the runtime graphs from the link in the uh, below to the full review. But when you have it on the higher output settings, it keeps that high output for about three minutes and then it automatically drops down to a lower output to keep the light from overheating and also to preserve your battery power. But if you want, you can crank it back up to a higher output. So uh, that's a, the most basic operation. The next thing you can do with it um, is to change the output level of the individual emitter separately. So if I hold down on the power switch for about a second, I get to this screen. And what this is is the, the individual levels of the two different emitters. So if I pull this downward, then it shifts all the way to be just the warm emitter. And here I'll put the power back down so my camera can focus on that. So I've got this all the way down here, and you can see that the warm emitter is on and the cool emitter is completely off. And then if I pull this level up, you can see the warm emitter dims and the cool emitter brightens. So now the cool emitter is on and the warm emitter is off. And I can pick any place in between. So if I put it about in the middle, then they're about equal. I can shift it more to one side or to the other side by pulling the screen up and down. So this is the adjustable tint feature. And if you're looking at the beam pattern and the beam tint over there, 
Oops, wrong button. Sorry about that. Here we are. If uh, you're looking at the beam, and again, I apologize, this looks cooler in real life, uh, but I'm sorry, warmer in real life, but you can see there's a, a warmer beam and there's the cooler beam. So this is the adjustable tent feature. You can pick whichever tent in you want. Um, now, what you might use that for is up to you. Uh, I think it's a pretty fun feature, uh, but it's up to you to decide how you're going to use that and what uh, tent level you like. So it's a, a pretty neat feature. Um, so then to get back, I'm just holding the power button again, and I'm back to my brightness selection screen. So um, the next thing that you can do is hold down, when you're in this uh, regular output, you hold down on the mode button here for about a second, and then it goes to your strobe mode. And the strobe mode, you can also adjust the brightness of it. So you can have a bright, brighter strobe, a dimmer strobe, and you can also adjust the tint of your strobe. So you've got cool strobe and warm strobe, and that's neat. Uh, if you hold down on the mode button again for a second, it goes to this kind of intermittent flash, like a beacon mode. And again, you can adjust the brightness of it or the tint of it. So here we've got kind of some warm <laughs> beacon, or I can do a cool beacon. Um, and also go back to this mode and uh, by holding the power for a second I can adjust the brightness of it. So I've got a dim strobe or a dim beacon or a bright beacon. And then one more if I hold down on the mode button one more time I go to SOS mode and I can adjust the brightness of it. Or again by holding down on the power I can go back to the tint adjustment and go to a, a warm SOS or a cool SOS. So you've got complete control you, uh, to sum it up. Uh, you have constant on and, of the main emitters. You have constant on, you have strobe, you have beacon, and you have SOS. And for each of those you can control the brightness and the tint of it by shifting the uh, uh, two emitters. Um, so those are the two main emitters, how those work. The next feature that it has is you hold this mode button here on the screen and it shifts to the RGB emitters on the side. Now these you can't make them strobe or beacon or SOS and you can't adjust their tint or their brightness output. Uh, you just have, they just have their constant on feature. Uh, they don't, you can't make them dimmer or brighter or anything but you can adjust their color. So here's the red and if I hold the mode again it goes to green. If I hold the mode again it goes to blue and then if I hold it again it goes to this uh, alternating between red and blue strobes. And I hold it one more time and it goes back to the main emitters. So I'll show you the beam patterns there. And the red is kind of hard to see, so I'll put it right there. And you can tell, up close, you can tell these two ringy beams. Uh, when it gets further away, obviously things smooth out a little bit. Um, and then there's the green. And there's the blue. There's the strobing. So um, that is the function of the... Uh, user interface. So again, just to sum up, you got the constant, for the main emitters, you have constant on, you have beacon, and you have, I'm sorry, strobe, beacon, and SOS. And for each of those, you can control the brightness or the tint by shifting the power between the two emitters. And then you also have the red, the green, and the blue, and the red-blue strobe. Uh, so those are all the different output modes the SAO4 have, and that's a lot to know. Uh, that's why I recommend keeping the instruction manual around because it's got a lot going on. So um, that is the basics of the Immolent SAO4 from their Shark series, and if you stick around for just a moment, we'll take it outside and give it a shot in the dark. Hello and welcome back to Review the Light. We've got the Immolent SAO4 out here, and uh, we're going to give it a shot in the dark. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here, and I'm not going to spend too much time going over the user interface. Hopefully if you have any questions you'll be able to rewind, and I caught it on the indoor portion. But as you can see out here, the beams do converge a lot better than you were able to see indoors. So from this point of view, even when I rotate it or whatever, you can see the spot uh, seems pretty consistent. Now if you look out here at the edge of the beam, you might be able to see some of the artifacts as I rotate it, depending on uh, the brightness you have on your screen and what I'm able to do in the post-processing to kick that brightness up. Um, but it is uh, kind of a wide beam, so as you're using it, you know, uh, like if I hold it in this orientation, it's more of an up-down uh, flood, and if I hold it like this, we've got more side-to-side -side flood. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and uh, this is the, this, the settings that it turned right on at. This is maximum brightness with uh, both emitters uh, balanced in their output. So uh, we will switch things up a little bit just to demonstrate. So first I will uh, activate the brightness changing here. So I've got maximum brightness now. I'll just 
slide that down. There's the minimum, oh, jumped back. There's the minimum brightness, so you may uh, have trouble seeing that, but it is on. So it's a very dim minimum brightness here. And up close, of course, you can see the difference between the cool and the warm emitters on my hand there. Uh, this is the minimum brightness setting. And then quickly, uh, very bright at the maximum. So I'll give you a, a look here now. Indoors, the, bright, the white balance was a little bit off, but out here you can tell, if I get a good focus, the difference between, obviously, the cooler emitter here on the left and the warmer on the right. Uh, a very noticeable difference to your eyes, and this is pretty true to what I'm seeing uh, with my eyes as well. So, uh, we'll just again show you the, the brightening and the dimming. So there's the, the maximum and the minimum outputs, so I'll, I'll leave it on max here. And then uh, we'll switch between the tints. I'm going to go to the, oh, wrong button, excuse me, while well, I'm here. Uh, I'll just This is the strobe function, and again, you can do the brightness adjusting and the tint adjusting with that and we'll go ahead and go into the beacon mode so here we've got the maximum brightness beacon and you can do the brightness adjusting with the beacon as well so here I've dimmed the beacon so it's very dim uh, you can adjust the brightness and the tint with the beacon and then finally the same with the SOS I can adjust the brightness and the tint with that too if I like uh, so we'll go back to the, ma the steady output and here this time if I hit the right button um, we will go, here we are, in the uh, tint balance mode. So right now I am in the middle, uh, even balanced between the, the cool and the warm. Um, but if I shift it up this direction, it gets cooler. Shift it down this direction, it gets noticeably warmer. This is a pretty good representation of what I'm seeing. Um, so that's nice. You can see it's a very nice warm beam. And up here, a very cool beam. So whatever your preference is for whatever your task, you can pick anywhere in between either of those two settings you can adjust the tint so it's very nice very nice and uh, at these longer distance because the beams are converged you're not seeing that much of a uh, shift in the beam pattern as you shift the tint so that's pretty nice uh, so uh, let's see I'll just pick it somewhere in the middle I guess uh, I will go ahead and turn down the brightness so that you can see the shift between the emitters up close here There I am shifting between the cool and the warm up close. And obviously there's quite a few steps in between, so it just looks like a stepless dimming, which is a very smooth controlled. So uh, we will next move into the color emitters. All right, and I miss showing you the red, it's too fast. Um, so here's the red, you can see it on my hand up close. Um, now it's uh, kind of got some interesting color uh, due to the white balance on my camera, but it's just a solid red to my eyes. Um, here's the green, and there's the blue, and there's the red and blue strobe. So um, these don't have the longest range, as you can see. You may or may not be able to see that on your uh, screen, but I will point it at the ground close by, and you can see here's the red. And hopefully I'll be able to increase the brightness for you there. Here's the green. Obviously the green is showing up better on grass than the red. Here's the blue. And here's the red and blue strobe. And uh, for the sake of those dimmer brightnesses, I'm actually gonna turn around here and uh, you can have a look at my dog who is white and will demonstrate the different colors pretty well as he's uh, tied up here watching me do this review. So um, here's the red. Say hey to everyone, Hercules. Hercules, say hi. <laughs> there's the red, there's the green, and there's the blue. So you can see on him, a, a white dog, the uh, different tints. I won't strobe him too much, he might not like that. Um, but those are the, the different colors available from the red, green, and blue emitters. And obviously you can see it's a pretty uh, ringy beam pattern due to the fact they're just from those uh, small emitters and they don't have any sort of reflector really uh, or anything um, smoothing out their beam pattern. And so that's uh, what those look like there. So thanks, Rick, for your help. All right, and uh, this has been uh, Review the Light on the uh, Emolent SAO4 uh, multicolor, multi-tint uh, 4AA flashlight. So if you uh, liked the review, then go ahead and uh, click the like button, which I believe is down here somewhere for the review. Uh, follow me on Facebook up there. Uh, subscribe to my channel here, and if you want any more details of all the fun data, go ahead and hit the link to the full review below. Uh, so, thanks for sticking around.